Otherwise, obviously, the interoperability between L2 is just, is just crazy better in, in Jam. So my name is Oliver. Uh, I work with Parity since three years now. I'm from Germany, lived there ever since, like a bit south of Frankfurt, but I like to visit uh, the office every now and then. Originally, I started to work in Web3 in 2019. I mostly work with Rust code uh, at Parity, at the runtimes function and mostly Polkadot Kusama runtime. But I'm also doing like release process currently and helping with the Plaza migration, moving everything to Acetop. So we have a name for our team that's Jambrains, and then our implementation name is called Gray Matter. So in this case, it has like two meanings, like first of all, gray, like the gray paper and matter as opposed to the paper. It's like a manifestation of the paper. And also it's like kind of the brain of, of, of our, like the specification of the blockchain. I agree to, to do this in my part-time and, you know, doing anything in part-time that is this um, fundamental it's like quite challenging, but yeah, it's definitely more than what I would usually do. But another aspect is that the long-term vision for Polkadot is Jam anyway. So, you know, anything I, I learn doing Jam, I will need at parity in two years at most. So I'm kind of getting a head start on anything Jam related. And I think that will be valuable for parity as well. Originally started in Ethereum space. Um, I started to like work at the university spin-off. We did uh, state channels or payments or general uh, contract execution. Then from there on, I kind of saw Polkadot. We, we got uh, two Web3 grants and I saw that they're doing this in Rust and I was a bit annoyed with the TypeScript and Golang code and I thought, ah, can do everything in Rust, can just write the test in Rust. So I thought, yeah, maybe, maybe I should try this. I also worked on this grant and I saw that the tech stack is, is quite nice and that's how I got into Polkadot. So originally it was really the gray paper, like having a clear spec of what to build that's extremely unique in software. Like always when you work with customers, they have a request. I mean, in most cases they have no clue what they want. Maybe you can get them to agree to some something initially and then they change it. They, they realize, ah, maybe not. And you know, it keeps evolving and as a developer, you're always running behind. You can't really get a good grip on it and just start building. And with the gray paper, it's kind of the other way around. We just have a very clear spec of what needs to be done and we can just do it and even get a price for it. That's like the dream of software developers, you know. <laughs> we rather recently started on this more visionary journey for how to position Jam. And what I would hope for is that we can really be like a cloud provider for um, like any kind of Web3 application or service, like providing anything that is necessary for Web2 applications to be trustless and resilient and just be plug-in solutions for these. So to basically get adoption from, from big services and apps that already exist. So basically to be a Web3 cloud, a AWS for, for Web3. I think in, in one sentence, that would be it. So as a developer, I just like challenges. I like to stay at the forefront of technology. Now again with the gray paper. Like if I would work at a big company, you know, they move slowly, they have like yearly or targets or even longer uh, horizons. When stuff moves too slow, I get bored. So that's from a tech perspective. And otherwise, like from my uh, morals, I have like a distrust against banks and mm, in general, I guess. Uh, so I see that they de they deplatform people, they ban people's accounts for various reasons. I just don't agree with that. And I think we have the ways to, to make that like escapable to, to have ways where people cannot be banned, cannot be deplatformed. Yeah, that's, that's I think my main reason. Originally, I mean, there were a lot of like, you know, early projects that just, they get a good head start on anything and they, they get a high market value. And I think now, like, especially since the last, I don't know, six, nine months, maybe we see a lot of competition for established projects to actually keep evolving, who just, you know, in the past, it could just keep existing, but now there's like a, a real competition actually taking on and projects have to keep improving themselves. And I think this is really pushing us forward uh, technology wise. Otherwise from the adoption, I mean, this is pretty much orthogonal to it. And I'm honestly not sure what's, what's the biggest thing keeping us back. I think one is like, it's a new technology. People don't trust it. I mean, banks have been around for, I don't know, 400 years or more. <laughs> And people, you know, have a deep trust in, in these kinds of institutions. And like reasonably, they don't have, they don't, they shouldn't even have much trust in something that's just around for 10 years and it's like promising them to keep their money safe forever and like things like this. I'm sure it's not just about money and tokens, but I think it extends. Like it's just a new technology that people are unfamiliar with and 
ideally they also shouldn't need to be familiar with this. Like as a user, I should just be able to get the benefits of FC without having to like interact with it. Like I shouldn't need a wallet or I shouldn't need to know what a blockchain is just to, to have the benefits, right? Otherwise we kind of failed. Um, and yeah, we are nowhere near that. So maybe that's a, that's my answer that we need to make it like less about blockchains and more about the things that we want to deliver with them. There, there's a lot of L2 laun uh, tools launching and I think launching an L2 is still more reasonable than launching an L1. There's also a lot of L1s launching. Um, I think it's a lot of experimentation and a lot of VC money getting like experimented with, possibly burned. That's, I think a lot of money allows a lot of experimentation to happen and not all of this is like serious or sustainable or gonna survive three years. So I think we shouldn't really attach too much to what currently is, but what we can change and, and improve. And with Jam, like when I look at currently L2 architectures, it always kind of makes me sad because we have to rebuild everything that we even already have in Polkadot and will have in Jam. Like we have to rebuild a bridge between rollups. Like, come on, in Polkadot we already have, we have that. We have fixed, yeah, you just send from one rollup to another. There's a huge waste going on, a huge waste in performance and in cost. And I think eventually, like when do we see funds dry up, you know, you, there's a need for efficiency. And I think that's where Jam can excel because in Jam you have native interoperability, you have L2s directly uh, communicating, there's no, uh, nothing stopping you from, from building something very efficient, very close to the hardware. Also with Polka VM, we stay very close to the hardware. So I think for an L3, uh, for a Web3 system, we have like a, a rather low overhead uh, with cost. So I would hope that, that maybe that's a driving factor. Otherwise, obviously, the interoperability between L2s is, is just crazy better in, in Jam.